Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, saints. I just want to talk to y'all this morning. I am so thankful and so truly blessed. And this uh, testimony is basically for anyone that has kids or even think has children or thinking about even having children. Because you know as a parent, our children pick up some of our habits. Amen. Most of our habits. Some of them are bad. But uh, God is a, is a rewarder of them that that diligently seek right. him. Amen. So, um, I am a, I'm a proud dad and uh, I have a son, he's 25, and uh, he picked up a, a few of my bad ways. You know, as a, I'm not perfect, so All there's right. things I try to keep from him, but as a parent, as a dad, he still picked them up. Uh -huh. yeah. But along with that, he picked up one of the, one of the best things I could ever teach him. Come on, okay. Uh -huh. God bless us in many ways. He blesses us in financial ways. He gives us houses and cars. Yeah. But let me tell you something. When he bless you with something that money can't buy, oh, when he blesses you with something that money can't buy, yeah. it's like an indescribable feeling. Yes. Especially from your child, oh, a grown man. Yes. So, um, my daughter had gone through a situation that could have been could have been life altering. Yes. It was horrible news, right? And I called my pastor. And my pastor, uh, he wasn't really disturbed by it, and that kind of troubled me a little bit because of, <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, we should be praying like right hard. Let me pray. <laughs> pastor said, well, you can think of it two ways: is is your problem bigger than God, or God bigger than your problem? Oh, I said that was it for me right there. The God I serve is bigger than any problem that, will fit, that I will ever face. So, I got my, my, I got my mother, sister, brother, uh, daughter's mom, daughter. Everybody's looking at me to see what I'm going to do, how I'm going to react. My daughter's looking at me. My son's looking at me. Everybody's watching me, right? And the only thing I know is to hasten to God. Oh, I mean, diligently seek him. Wherever pastor said he needed me, I don't Every care time. what it was. I got even closer. I got closer to this ministry. I got closer to God. I got closer to the people in this ministry. I just started reaching out to people. I, didn't, I just started helping people that I thought needed help. Because why? I knew help was coming my way. I knew that was coming my way. And I knew, I knew I had to show them a better way, a different way, a better way. When, when, when all that spells and you think there's nothing you can do, there's still something you can do. So me and my son, we have a, we have a good, a really, really good relationship. We talk about everything, but it really shocked me to hear him call me the other day. And no, lately, since my daughter was healed, thank you, Jesus, she's healed. Let me not forget that. And Jesus' mighty name to heal. So after that, they really start talking to me and calling. Our, our relationship has really, really changed for the better. Although we had a good relationship, it's even better. It's like having that icing on the cake. You know what I'm saying? I don't eat cake, but those that do, you know what I'm talking about. So um, he calls me on the phone and he was like, he said, Dad, I want to tell you about this blessing. A well, that just that was just strange hearing coming from him. Amen. But he, he called me yesterday. He said, "I want to tell you about this blessing." He said, "You know, he's in school, so and he's going to summer school, and in summer school you don't get funded." And he was like, "Dad, I was praying for a job." He said, "All the way, I woke up that morning, all the way to school, I'm just praying for a job." And he said, "I got a job at school." And when he, called, when he told me that, I know he thought I was crazy all over again because I gave God all the glory. Oh, yeah. I praise God. I praise God. I gave him glory. And then I told my family, I said, he called me and said he wanted to tell me about a blessing. Oh. Not about the good news. Not what happened to me. He said he wanted to talk about a blessing. Yeah. Let me tell you something about this place right here. Let me tell you about this place right here and that man right there and these people right here. Let me tell you 
how powerful, anointed, blessed, and loved you guys are. You guys have shown me a different me. And not just one of you. I can say that every last one of you have contributed, have contributed to my growth, my love, my fellowship, my walk with Christ. I thank you so much. God bless everybody. Amen. God will do things for you that money can't buy. God will do things for you that money cannot buy. This man right here is so faithful. He's so committed. He's dedicated. He's teachable. He has a pure spirit. He's honest. He's up front. He's not money hungry. He, he's a real man of God. Amen. A real man of God. Acts 17, 28 says it like this, for in him we live and move and have our being. That's right. In him. As certain also of your own prophets have said, for we are also his offspring. Amen. Lee is God's offspring. Yes. Lee showed his son a different life. Amen. And that's why Lee's offspring is now blessing God. Amen. Amen. And that's what money came by. Amen. His children's children are blessed because of what he's done. He set a whole nother legacy for his whole family. For generations to come. Come on, let's give God a hand praise. Let's give him glory in the house. You say of the Lord, he will save your entire household. That's what he promised us, and he's done it in our lives. Come on, come on, testify, y'all. I would like to bring Minister Christina up. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you. This morning at 930, we learned, uh, well, we got a little word about being thankful just for every every area in our life, every place that God's taken us. Amen. And so I, I just went on a little spiritual walk myself and I realized that, you know, God definitely knows what he's doing before you're even born, right? Amen. So um, at 19, I was blessed with a beautiful son Amen. and Amen. he is amazing and perfect in every way. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. And along this journey of raising this son, God has you know, directed my path on what to do with him, how to deal with him. And thankfully, he's always been a self-motivator and a self-starter. Amen. And I just want to do a praise report because he has just recently taken his PSATs, you know, the pre-standardized academic testing. Amen. Amen. He is currently in the eighth grade. He'll be graduating Wednesday. But he took this test. On this test, um, and this is what you take once you are about to apply for college. You take the SAT, correct? Uh -huh. So your highest score is a 1440. Amen. My son got an 1120 at 13, coming out of the eighth grade, going into high school. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. So worthy. He's so worthy. So going from a scared 19-year-old, I didn't know how to raise anything. I was still trying to raise myself, and I thank God that he kept me because... I did grow up with my son. Unfortunately, you know, I was young, so we had to grow together. Amen. But God gave me a son that he knew would be perfect for me, that he knew that I could take care of, that he knew that and believed that I had the strength to deal with. So he gave me this amazing blessing when I didn't think I was worthy. Because I'm telling you, that was the most fearful job for me was a mother. That's another life you have to take care of. That's somebody that you have to think about beyond yourself. Yes. And... I just thank God that this has not been a troublesome thing. Like, I have Amen. truly done nothing but praise my son from Talk the moment he was born. Because he has always uplifted me. In times of trouble, he has been the one that told me he loves me unconditionally. You know, when I didn't know that God was there for me, when I was, you know, backsliding and wasn't really paying attention, God was speaking to me through my son. You know what I mean? God was speaking to me through my son. But ultimately, I'm doing it for God. So God oh, led us here to this place to where he can understand from a small age on what he's doing it for, which is God, utmost, directly. He's doing yes. it for oh, God yeah. first. Yes. And I just thank God, and I just wanted to give that praise report. Um, also, I was I 
um, enrolled him into another school before he was accepted to the um, academy that he got accepted to for high school. And there were four different um, academies, uh, little groups that they have there that focus on math and English and things. And you're supposed to have an interview service and all these things to, you know, get accepted. So I put him in those not knowing what was going to happen. So he got accepted to his other school. This school calls me last week and they're just overjoyed. They're like, Corey got accepted to all four. We're excited. We want you, you know, to come here. and just sign him up and you know I told him oh I'm so sorry like he won't be attending uh -huh. there and then they got an attitude with me they said really where's he gonna go and you know I told him he's going to soar high and then she you know just was like okay well thank you and she hung up the phone like I was just amazed like something he didn't even have to work for like you know they're just you know God's just giving them blessings and just handing him ways to go and, you know his way and I just thank God for being there for us and, and you know just truly being there to guide us along the way and I'm just so thankful and so proud of you, Corey. You are a great, great young man of God, and you are growing into something that's more amazing than anyone can know. And I just know that God has you, and he has me, and we're going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. glass of water Amen. in the name of a prophet and you receive what? A prophet, prophet reward. reward. Well, the young prophet said that Corey would be accepted yes, he to Sower High School. Yes, he did. That's what the young prophet said he, who's um, out evangelizing right now. Amen. That's what the young prophet said. And uh, the test of every prophet is what he says comes to pass. Because see, what you got to realize, the prophet that I'm talking about ain't me. Amen. I'm talking, how, how old is uh, Joaquin? 13. I'm talking about the 13-year-old oh, prophet. Yeah. Uh, they spoke that into existence. And God would super abundantly above all that he could ask a thing. See, because what we brought up here is the leaders of this world. What we raised it right here the most anointed children this earth has seen. Amen. Yeah, that's, that's what we're raising around here. And I thank God that we have mothers that's smart enough to bring their sons and daughters to a ministry that's training the youth, that's training the young people to run this nation, to run this world. And that's exactly what they're doing. You didn't hear me. They got four programs at the school. He was accepted in all of them. All of them. And had to turn them all down. See, so y'all don't hear me. That, that's the kind of blessings you got coming. Because the Bible says a child shall lead them. So, so, oh, God is so good. God is so good. And I'm so proud of each and every one of them us. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you all. Come on, testify. Talk about how good God is. Hallelujah, Lord. God, this, this, this woman of God right here serves. I, 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 boy, huh? She, she, if I got on orange, I got an orange hanky. If I got on blue, I got a blue one. If, if, she, she, this, this woman Come on, now. that's diligent. Keep my office clean, smelling good. You walk in there, you think you done stepped in heaven or something. And all I got to say, that's Christina. Because she... Testify, y'all. Could testify. God bless you. God bless you. Testify in the house. Hallelujah, Lord. Let's keep this praise party going. Let's keep it going. Amen. I have a, a testimony as well. All I mean, right. when when you're doing God's will, when you're trying to do the right thing, He just continues to order your footsteps. Amen. Amen. My testimony is in relation to my car. I needed some new tires. I needed all four new tires, um, but I was just gonna get two because that's what I could do at the moment. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'll go to the tire shop. 
Um, and while I was out, I was running some other errands and I couldn't remember exactly where it was. So, you know, we have these smartphones. I put it in my, in my little app to, so it can guide me to where the tire shop was because I remembered the name of it. And it, it didn't work. And I'm like, what's going on with my phone? Like normally whenever I punch in any type of address, it's supposed to guide you. That's what it does. Right. So I'm like, maybe it's because I'm at the bank. Maybe the reception isn't good. So I go to another place, I'm continuing to run errands, and I've tried two different apps. I tried Google Maps and the maps on my phone. And neither one of them are letting me know where this tire place is. And I'm like, I don't want to be driving around aimlessly wasting gas, you know? <laughs> so I'm like, but I guess that's what I'm gonna have to do because I don't, I don't know where it is. Um, but God, he was working on something. He was trying to guide my footsteps to the place that he wanted me to be. You know? So I get in my car and I say, I know, I believe that there is a, um, a tire place like on Jay and Sierra. I think that's the one I went to before. So I take Jay all the way down to Sierra and I see a tire place, which was not the one that I went to previously, but I was like, okay, I'll go to this one. So I pull into the tire place and um, I get out of the car and I'm expecting, you know, for four brand new tires, it's going to cost close to $400. Like they'll say like 378, but then yeah. you have to have your you know, your fee to throw them away and tax and all that on top of it. So it's going to cost close to $400. So I go into the tire place and a man, he sees me and he starts telling me what the prices for the tires are and everything like that. And I'll say to him, well, you know, that sounds good, but maybe I can get like two or three tires. What's your price for that? And he looks at me and he's like, why would you want to get two or three tires? I'm like, that's what I could do right now. And so he says to me, well, I, I see something and you reminds me of my daughters and I want to help you out and I want to work with you. And I'm like, okay, okay, well, can you do this? Amen. And so he tells me that he can give me the same four tires that he was going to charge me close to 400 for. He's going to charge me $250. Because I told him I could spend like 200 He said, you can pay me 200 now, and then when you get the other 50 you can come back and pay me. Back. Oh, I mean, what type of person will be that trusting? Like, he doesn't know me, I don't know him, to say that you can come back and pay, and just to say I'm going to basically cut the price of the tires in half for you, just because, you know? So that's what God ordering our footsteps, amen? in uh, Luke 6 and 38 that given it shall be given unto you yes. good measures pressed down shaken together shall men pour into your bosom and that's exactly what that is that's men pouring into your bosom it's not like money just coming down from the chimney God will order your footsteps to the place that he wants you to go to so you can get that blessing Amen. I mean, and then that's what we learned here at this ministry. We have a couple more testimonies, but the common thread among all the people that are testifying today is that they're givers. That's, that's what it is. That's the common thread. We know that sowing into this ministry, not only does it, I mean, I just want everybody to take a moment and just look around for a minute. Let them just look at everything that we're doing here at this ministry. Amen. Not only does it sow into God's kingdom where we can employ people, where we can do all the type of things that we do into the community, amen? Not only does it do that, but it, 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 it stores up your, your storehouse in heaven as well. We learn that when we give, it's, it's not just something that we're doing out of shape, form, or formality. It's, um, it's, it's an account. Like, it's like your heavenly account. When you give, you deposit that finances and it turns into a spiritual blessing. So that when you use your account, your your heavenly account, if you will. And then when something is happening, I remember Minister Peggy, her son Isaac That's used to right. have a terrible, a terrible peanut allergy where he would eat any type of little peanut oil and he'd just swell up and they'd have to take him to the hospital and he'd be in there for days. But Minister Peggy, she would deposit into her heavenly account. So when something like that happened, oh, yeah. he ate a handful of peanuts. and get that back out, and now he doesn't have a peanut allergy anymore. Yeah. He used to be deadly, you know? He has to go to the hospital. Amen. Oh, the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know about y'all, but something powerful just went down. I needed that. I needed that. I needed that. Hallelujah, Lord God. The Holy Spirit know what he's doing at all the time. He can't let us up. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Jesus. 
This one has been crazy. Financially crazy. See, it didn't make sense. It didn't make sense in the system world. In the, in the world system. It didn't make sense for me to take care of everything I need to take care of. Rent, um, food for the week, gas. Um, things that just need to be purchased and pay my tithes and offerings. It didn't make sense. I, it was breaking my mind trying to figure it out. I got um, projects I need to finish, places I need to put my money, and it did not make sense on, to man. pay my tithes and offerings. How many people, am I the only one that went through that? Oh, no. nah. So my mind is stressed out. And I went to one of my brothers that's in the same ministry. See, it's a beautiful thing to have like-minded people around you going forward, not talking to people that's behind you, dragging you backwards. You understand? That's what you find in my brother. And my mind be healed. That's why I'm turned up at 25, life saved. That's why. I got peers in prison. I got peers in the grave that I grew up with that's not here. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord, God. So when, when pastor that's led by the Holy Spirit says somebody in there in this, in this, in this building is going to have a breakthrough, give them praise, and that's when I need it. So I lose my mind because that's what I needed. Hallelujah, Lord God. And I defied all logic. I said, Lord, you already blessed me multiple times. You blessed everybody I know. I need a new job right now. I need a new job with less hours and more pay. Right? Right? I know some people in here just got blessed with new jobs. So that's why my heart is open right now. That's why my heart is open, because I know God did it for my sister. God did it for my brother. He going to do it for me. Because he said he ain't no respecter of person. Right? That's if we going by this word that he said, right? So I defied all logic because I need something. Amen. So I said I ain't going to listen to that. I ain't going to not pay my time. I was just going to pay half of it. I went over and beyond because our pastor and our first lady... They're accustomed to going over and beyond. Over and beyond. How can I just do less? Right? I'll be spitting in their face. All the hard work they done did and I just do half. I got people that's blessing me. I, I forgot I blessed them. I forgot I helped them out. I got people shaking my hand with money and they're talking about I didn't forget. When you condition in your heart that say I'm going to defy logic, I'm going to do what God say. Because I heard our president of men's fellowship say, our God is bigger than our problems. Our problems ain't bigger than our God. God know my financial situation. He said his son is watching him. I got kids watching me. How can my kids see me do halfway or less than? And I'm expecting something from God. I need less time and more pay. That's even more outrageous, right? So I went above and beyond. I grabbed that financial breakthrough. I grabbed that financial. I got people. I sent in my resume. Sent in my resume out. Didn't hear from nobody, right? A lady come back. She gave me a response talking about that the, uh, she couldn't read the format. If I could send it in, in, in Word. If I could just email the words out to the um, from my, my resume. Now, that's unheard of. Right. Yes, it is. In the work world, if you don't have your title or your subject in the right place, they dismiss the whole email, right? They dismiss the whole email. That's what's been happening to me my whole life. But right now, in these few years, I'm doing something I ain't never done, right? Because I'm trying to get to a place I ain't never been. All my family is borrowers and renters. My whole lineage is borrowers and renters. Yeah. I'm trying to be an owner and lender. So I got to do something my family ain't did. I got to get what my family ain't gave. And I'm turned up about it. And y'all going to have another testimony. Because the lady said, just give me back what you need. Just, just give it in word format. Just give it in word format. She got, I got her, her number, her email. 
her cell, her office. Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, because of this place. Because of these people. My brother saying, well, hey, what you tripping for? Just give it. God will work it out. What you stressing for? We learned, we talking about rest here. Amen. God will work it out. Amen. I said, for show you right, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. But if I was talking to one of my knucklehead friends, uh, they would have told me to do something Amen. foolish. Amen. Disrupt my whole lineage. Amen. Throw my whole blessing out. When this place has been proven to be good ground, it's proven. We just sip it up, be expecting it, because I'm expecting mine, and I'm going to tell y'all about it. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus, Lord. I'd like to call up another minister that I got something exciting to tell y'all how God has been blessing her. Let's put your hands together for Minister Rosa. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I, it would probably take all day for me to get out every little aspect of the testimony and everything that God's been doing over the course of the last year in my life. So I'll start back. Um, first off, when I came to the ministry, I think I was in the ministry for all of two months before a pastor set me aside and gave me instruction in a secular job. And um, since then, I've been employed since I came into the ministry. Uh, first job ever, never worked fast food, never worked retail. Got a job in banking with no history, no resume, no high school diploma. This is how I came into the ministry. This was, this was as soon as I came in, right? And through that job, I've been able to uh, financially provide for my household and my son for all these years. And even that job left, went out of state, I got blessed with another job. So I've always worked for like a, a major corporation, I guess you could say. And um, when I left AAA for maternity leave, God told me I didn't have to go back. Now, I thought it was for one job that didn't end up working out. Um, so, you know, whatever. But, so maternity leave, you get about eight weeks. Six weeks if you have a naturally, eight weeks if you have a C-section. They give you eight weeks of paid disability before you have to go back to work, right? Eight weeks. So I took my eight weeks, and I didn't want to go back. So, I didn't even, I, they told me, go to the doctor. Say you have postpartum depression and get them to write you off. I didn't have to do none of that, uh, right? I made a doctor's appointment. I went to the doctor. I walked in there. She didn't ask me no questions. She just said, do you need some more time? I said, yeah. <laughs> so um, as part of this testimony, Joby's mom actually works there at, in the front. So I know that they're used to giving people like an additional six weeks. They'll give you like an additional six weeks when you go to the doctor. You know, if you say that you are having separation anxiety, which I didn't have to say, I have claimed nothing, I just need more time. So when I walked out, the doctor wrote my note off. So I'm like, cool. So I get, they get to extend the disability, give them my job, I get more time off. I don't know what I'm doing yet, but I know God told me I didn't have to go back. It's a long commute. I was working in the valley. So all together with traffic, I was commuting about three and a half hours a day on top of an eight hour, eight and a half hour work day. So when I walk back out to the front to say bye to Joby's mom, I'm like, bye. And she's like, oh, did they give you time? I said, yeah. And I just showed her the paper. I hadn't even thought about it. She said, what? They gave you three months instead of six weeks. Right? So this is like, that was already crazy because nobody gets an additional three months. I ended up going back again and getting another six weeks after that. So God just continued. You want to stay home? I told you you wasn't going back. So I'm like, okay. But then, you know, that starts running out. So then I started to get nervous. Okay, well, God said I wasn't going back. And when I left, I told this other girl she could take over my position. So the managers, they could give her my position. I wasn't coming back. So they already put me down to a lower position. Now it really don't make sense to drive all the way back out there for less money. So I'm like, okay, well, God, you said I wasn't going to have to go back. And I'm enjoying my son. I didn't know I was going to like him so much. But he's super cool, right? <laughs> so uh, he's really cool. So... I'm just enjoying my son, and I don't want to go back, but time is running out, and I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? So, disability ran out, and I'm still not back to work, but my job is, you know, they're calling, what are you going to do? And I'm telling them, well, I don't know yet. Avoiding calls and stuff, but they keep me on payroll the whole time. So, um, one day, God tells me to pick up. Let me mention that during this time, right, um, this ministry teaches you a lot of different stuff, and one thing that we learned about is structure and the structure of the family. Uh -huh. So during this time that I'm not working and enjoying my son, God blessed me tremendously in my family with a great man uh -huh. who brought home every dime that he made after his tithes and offerings. Uh -huh. And um, that's the type of man God is raising up in this ministry. Amen. Men who, uh, who know their rightful place and who are going to be the 
providers of their household, so I ain't got to stress. I can enjoy this cute little awesome baby. Amen. And so he's lining up order and lining up structure and just blessing my family, and I'm enjoying my time off, but I still don't know what's going to happen next. So one day, um, my job was calling, and I was like, okay, I'm not going to pick up. <laughs> I know I haven't been picking up. I'm not going to pick up. I don't know what I'm doing yet. I don't know what to tell these people, and God tells me to pick up. So I'm obedient, and I answer the phone, and I'm like, hello. And she's like, hi, you know, I'm so-and-so from Human Resources. I see they've been trying to get in contact with you. And I'm like, yeah. First off, they, there's only one lady in Human Resources, so I thought. She goes, yeah, no, my name is uh, Mia. I just came back from maternity leave yesterday. And they told me to give you a call. So I'm like, okay, hi, Mia. Well, I'm not coming back. She's like, okay, well, why not? I said, because I'm not going to drive three and a half hours, be away from the baby for 13 hours. With childcare and gas, it just doesn't make sense to do that anymore. So unfortunately, I'm not coming back. She was like, oh, I completely understand. I just had a baby. I'll tell you what I can do. If you, do you have a job yet? I said, no, I don't have a job yet. She said, well, even though you're quitting, I'm not going to word it like that in the system because I understand where you're coming from. I just came back. God had me wait wow. until this lady came back from maternity leave. Oh, wow. They could understand. To tell me she wasn't going to call it like that in the system. She was going to put that they no longer have my position available so you could still draw unemployment. So don't even, trip. Don't even worry about that, right? So I got to quit my job and still pull unemployment, right? So then I'm like, okay, cool. So I get a while off. My unemployment don't run out for a while, whatever. So um, we come in here, 9.30, Sunday mornings, right? Uh, during this time, I'm working. I'm working for the ministry, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, I make myself available to be here. And it was so cute as a little side testimony, Pastor. We are at my sister's house, and my nephew has this crazy amount of toys everywhere. It's just ridiculous. It's like a preschool. Andrew shifts through all these toys and finds a toy hammer and just starts banging it. Banging it, banging it, banging it. Would not put that toy hammer down all day. So I'm telling my sister, I said, that's because we'd be at the church working. Aww. Tuesdays and Thursdays, and this is what he sees. Oh, yeah. So he, he takes lunch and he knows how to hold a hammer, right? <laughs> I got to get him some toy hammers. But it's because we're here. Because I'm here. Even if I don't want to come here with a baby, I'm here. I put him on the floor and he watches us work. And so um, in that, I got a, uh, oh, first lady told us to get up and listen, right? So after you pray, you spend time listening and gave us the order in which, you know, we pray for things and we listen to God for things. And so I started doing that. And like, I think it was about the third day that I started doing that. I woke up and God gave me an instruction that I didn't understand. He said, you're going to get a call and it's me. And I said, oh, okay. <laughs> so I wrote it down. I was like, cool, I'm going to get a call and, and it's God. I don't know what that means. And he said, um, take it. And I said, okay. Now, I've only worked for big companies, so um, during the course of this, I have had some job offers, and I've turned them down um, because I'm not going to be doing something that I don't want to do. You know, if I have to be away from my baby um, and i got to get up every single morning and do it, I'm not going to do something that I hate. I'm just not going to do it. So I've turned down a couple jobs in the course of this time because I know God got me. So I answer the phone, and it's this lady, and she's like, hi, Alexandra. Um, I'm giving you a call about a resume you submitted. And I'm like, okay, who is this with? She's like, she just tells me the name of a construction company. And I'm like, first off, I wouldn't apply to no construction company. <laughs> Second off, I don't want to work for a construction company. That's not really my field um, at all, right? I don't, I don't care for, like, physical labor. I'm, I like to use my brain. So she was like, I read your application and your resume, and, you know, uh, we're a small office. We only have about five people, but we need someone to do the payroll. So automatically I started thinking, and I'm like, okay, a small office of five people, I don't want to do the payroll for five people. Um, they're probably going to try to pay me like $10 an hour to do payroll for five people. And it's a construction company. What do I want to do that for? But I remember what God said. So I said, okay. She said, can you come in for an interview? I said, sure. So I went to the interview. I think I was there for all of like 20 minutes, um, if that. And what she said, and I remember it very vividly, was it's payroll. I find out when I get there that they actually do payroll. They have about 300 construction workers on payroll. Wow. So it's a lot. Of, it's a lot, right? She said, well, I read your resume, and I see you deal with finances and stuff like that, which is a good thing. Um, you're the only one that I fooled. I see that you don't have any payroll experience, but this is probably something you're going to need. Huh. All right. I can learn how to do payroll for 200 people because I'm going to have people on payroll one day. I already know that. She's like, well, um, basically, when, when can you start? What can we pay you? What can you do? You know, like, how much would you, how much would you need us to pay you? And when can you begin? 
And I'm like, okay, so we negotiate terms and it's all good. And I ended up starting like three days later, which is crazy. But um, the crazy part about it is I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever have looked for that opportunity. So I know it was God. Wow. And um, after being there for about two weeks now, I really see that it's God because it's everything that I need. I get I, my three and a half hour a day commute is now in total about eight and a half minutes. That's where I end up. Amen. I um, was really worried about Andrew because he's very um, dependent on me to the point where he won't take a bottle or anything. So I get to um, come home. I'm, because it's a small company, they don't have a room for you to pump or do anything like that in. So I get to leave really as often as I need to go home and feed him. And I'm only four minutes from the house. So throughout the day, I get to go home. I get to see my little baby. I get to play with him, kiss on him. You know, and I'm off every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So I still get the weekends off, right? So it's just, um, and, that, and like I said, that, that is truly only a, a portion of what God has done and, and in this whole process of, of where he's had me and what Amen. he's done. And I'm just so grateful because every single thing that we learn in this ministry is not for in here. Amen. Amen. Um, it helps us be better people in here, but the faithfulness and the consistency. See, I've kept the job since I came into the ministry because I know how to be on time. Come on. And then I know how to be committed. I know how to be faithful. I know how to not call out even if I don't feel good. I know how to the things that we learn in this ministry. Amen. It, it truly, it blesses our lives. It blesses Amen. us as parents. It blesses our families. It blesses our li- our careers. Amen. Whatever we have. Amen. God is quite amazing, and I, I am going to urge anybody, anybody in this room who does not have a job, a steady job, and is available to come here and work, there is so many blessings you get out of it. Number one, like Pastor said, you cannot stay unemployed. When you give to God of your time, and you help do this and build this so that the anointing can flow in here, so that people can come in and see this, so that we can do God's business, if you take care of God's business, he's going to take care of yours. Amen? Amen. Um, every single time. So if you're not working and you have the ability to be here on a Tuesday or a Thursday, you get to connect with the man of God on a different level. It's not a Sunday service where he's up before the people. You get to actually sit down and talk to him. You get to learn things that you never learned before. My eight-month-old knows how to hold a hammer. Amen? Um, and stuff that you couldn't even imagine getting in this place. Amen? You get closer Amen. to your brothers and sisters. Um, like Lee said, iron sharpens iron, so we can be here working and strengthening each other and building each other. And then you get the pride of walking in here. When I walk in this place every Sunday, I love this place. I can look at that back wall and remember covering those walls. And it does something to you, because how can you not have faith and believe in the vision when you help bring it to pass? You see what you build in here? It's no... you. You walk in here every Sunday and you want to invite people. You right. want to build this place. Like, Amen. I encourage anybody who is available to assist the man of God and help build this ministry Amen. on Tuesdays and Thursdays, especially if you're looking for a job, need a job, or need anything from God, I, I suggest you be here. It would be um, very beneficial to your life. Amen. Amen. Amen.